Hmm. Hey everyone. Big the D Games Channel here. The internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Sun Kill Moon and Jesu Yesu collaborative record. This is a collaborative musical album featuring singer-songwriter Mark Kozlik of Sun Kill Moon and Red House Painters fame, teaming up with Justin Broderick, multi-instrumentalist, producer, who you might know from the plethora of musical projects he's been in, most notably Godflesh, which he recently resurrected, came out with a new full-length Godflesh album. Godflesh actually got a lyrical nod on Sun Kill Moon's last full-length album on the track Possum, it is, I believe. And I'm guessing going to that live show, seeing Godflesh, interacting with Justin, mentioning that in that Possum track was sort of the link that created this collaborative project over here. Now, part of me is saddened that this link, that this interaction didn't result in a new Godflesh album where Mark Kozlik is just screaming in horror over every single track. But I guess we got the next best thing here. We have Broderick tossing Kozlik on top of the very slow, heavy, dreamy rock instrumentation of one of his other very notable projects, Yesu. Which, in a sense, kind of worries me because, in my opinion, the latest material from Yesu, like the past three or four albums, haven't exactly been that great. Not only have the riffs and the songwriting been super stale, but the sound play is kind of surface level too. I mean, I don't really care for the really brittle distortion combined with the very heavy, heavy sub bass on these guitars. Honestly, and this is the case for this new album over here, I find uh, some of the heavier guitar tones on this thing kind of migraine inducing, especially on the second track here where the riffs are so redundant that it's almost like uh, th there's no end. Um, 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 um. Unfortunately, the first several tracks on this thing sort of seems like Justin and Mark putting together their respective styles in the most plain, uninspired, and most obvious way possible. I mean, I wouldn't want to listen to these super heavy, flavorless, shoegazy metal instrumentals on their own, and Mark Kozlik doesn't exactly sweeten the deal, especially since on these first several cuts, he's nearly drowned out by a lot of the guitars. His very soft, muttered, meandering musings on everyday life don't exactly slice through the blaring wall of distorted guitars, which was also kind of an issue for me on some of the more aggressive cuts from Mark's last album, Universal Themes, except uh, exacerbated. Lyrically though, from what I can tell on this project, Mark does seem a little more organized, focusing on topics and moments in his life recently that he's really passionate about, rather than just kind of packing these tracks with just everyday minutia just to kind of come through with this long-winded concept. Of course, I'm talking about how universal themes, quite literally in its lyrics, try to universally encompass so many things. But even without Mark forcefully trying to sing about every single thing that happens to him on this record, his music has most definitely been more personal lately, as noted in a letter that Mark reads in the midst of one of the tracks on this project. On the song Last Night, I Rocked the Room Like Elvis. And the letter does read a lot like pandering, the, the writer of the letter pandering to Mark, Mark kind of pandering to uh, himself. But it was interesting hearing Mark moved by the words of a listener, uh, sort of laughing at some of the things that the listener said, like how Benji is just kind of uh, uh, for the hipsters and how these latest albums are for the real fans who have been listening for the past 20 years and how Mark is sort of attacked so just unrelentingly in the press, the music press, who are just kind of looking for some drama. He actually reads another letter, which I enjoy a little bit more on the song America's Most Wanted later on the record. And there's actually a funny moment on this Last Night I Rocked the Room track where he says that he's giving the, the writer of the letter uh, co-songwriter credit since he did read the whole letter in this track. As you can see, the lyrics on this thing, super meta. And if you haven't been following the drama that Mark Kozlik has been embroiled in since the release of Benji, then much of what is sung about on this record might sort of fly over your head. But I'm not gonna say it's not compelling because Mark's vocal delivery, his personality, his lyrics are so good that it might 
intrigue you enough to actually look into what exactly he's singing about. I think a lot of the detours and the stories on this project are just more compelling than they are aimless, as Mark sings about tales from his tour, or a moment where he's poking fun at a fan who I guess is messaging him, asking him for a red vinyl or rare collector's vinyl or something like that. We have Mark revisiting the themes of family and death on the song Father's Day. And the track Exodus, which is related to the recent passing of Nick Cave's son, is the definition of touching through this catalyst of a situation, Mark explores the pain of losing your child. And it's worth noting that most of the instrumentals on this project don't go in this heavy, blaring, shoegazy direction that I really do not enjoy. And the song Sally, which is the only track after the first three songs that returns to that louder song, I find Mark's delivery over this track, his rage on this song, to be kind of uh, invigorating. So there are sounds on this project other than blaring guitars. I mean, the track Last Night goes in more of an electronic direction, as a couple tracks in the track listing here do. It sort of reminds me of what Mark was doing with Jimmy Laval, Lavalle, from the album Leaf on their collaborative album from 2013. And the all acoustic cut Fragile reads a lot like a song that could have been straight off of Benji, musically and lyrically, as Mark tells us how upset he was over the death of Yes's Chris Squire and sort of relates his passing in his battle with leukemia to a childhood friend who was also named Chris who was battling with the same disease. My favorite cuts on this project are toward the end, really. Uh, America's Most Wanted is definitely one of my favorite tracks here and I think brings a sound to the table. I wish more tracks on this record did. It has propulsive rhythms, it has electric guitars, but they don't overdo it. This level of volume and intensity seems like the perfect backdrop the perfect foundation for Mark. I actually think it gives what Mark says on this track a level of urgency as he's kind of telling this tale from tour, throwing in some musical references and some news items. It seems almost as if Mark has a foot in the world and a foot outside of the world. He's connected through news and through information, but simultaneously he's outside of that world on tour, connecting with people face to face, performing for audiences. And it kind of seems like in that world, which in a sense might be the real, really real world, I, I guess this song just kind of gives you a, an interesting perspective on touring and traveling juxtaposed against just the general vision and information that uh, your average person is handed every day about the world that they're living in. Or at least that's how I interpreted it. You know, I, I feel like this song could be interpreted in a myriad of different ways. Uh, I love the song Exodus. Again, really powerful track, some of the most powerful lyrics on the entire record. And the closing track here, Beautiful You, is a nice little ambient piece, very electronic, very spacey, very vast, and Mark kind of does a little bit of a spoken word thing over it, going more in detail into the minutia of his life, but in a way where his introspective thoughts are actually kind of uh, moving and thought-provoking. Even a moment when he decides to sort of go in the ocean, take a chance, water's cold, and, and a wave kind of rushes up and hits him and freezes his balls. <laughs> it's, it's funny and it's thoughtful at the same time. Uh, you know, Mark is a thought-provoking guy and he's a guy who obsesses over the little things, it would seem. And he's got a good sense of humor, too, and all of that comes through on this project. I just wish some of the instrumentals, especially those first three, uh, were better. And that Mark and Justin uh, sort of took this opportunity to, I don't know, come together with either a, a sound unique to this collaboration or just come together with a sound that was more complementary to what Mark was doing, especially since Mark's vocals and Mark's stories seem to kind of be leading the way on this thing. Prime example of that happening, America's Most Wanted. Prime example of that not happening, the first three tracks. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Transition. You giving a listen to this album? If you have, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? Should you burn a copy of this album? Pass it over to your mom? Let me know. Anthony Fantano, Sun Kill Moon, Yesu, forever.